prison warden comes by my prison cell and he says, hey, Valentino, could you draw my favorite golf hole? I don't know anything about golf. I've never golfed before. I've never even been on a golf course. I'm a black kid from the ghettos of America. Like, what the hell do you want me to draw a golf course for? But I took up the challenge. It was the 12th hole of Augusta. I was arrested at 21 for murder, crime that occurred in my neighborhood at a restaurant. Over 80 witnesses to this crime. I was there, I took off when the shots were fired. I was pulled over by uh, police shortly thereafter, taken into custody. Everyone knew they had the wrong man. Two days after I was arrested, eight witnesses came forward and the person that committed the crime actually came forward and explained to detectives what happened. Court is now in touch. I didn't have enough money for an attorney. I went to trial. My attorney did not present any evidence, didn't call any witnesses. The jury didn't even know another man confessed. I was given 40 years to life. I found myself in one of the worst prisons in America, Attica Correctional Facility, uh, home to the deadliest riots in U.S. history. And I was 21 years old. My uncle says, you need to start drawing again. As a kid, I drew every day. I went to an art school. I had totally given it up. I had seven years in prison. He says, if you can reclaim your talent, you can reclaim your life. I procrastinated a little bit. About a month later, I started drawing. I drew a rose. And all my fellow inmates were like, wow, you know how to draw? It was kind of embarrassing because they had never seen me draw, and I had been there seven years. The prison warden comes by my prison cell and he says, hey, Valentino, could you draw my favorite golf hole? I don't know anything about golf. I've never golfed before. I've never even been on a golf course. I'm a black kid from the ghettos of America. Like, what the hell do you want me to draw a golf course for? But I took up the challenge. It was the 12th hole of Augusta. The inmates loved it. They said, oh, wow, that's a cool, I'm like, you guys don't golf either, you know. <laughs> they loved it, the warden loved it, the prison staff loved it. My neighbor said, you should draw more golf holes. I'm like, whatever. A week later, he threw some old Golf Digest magazines on my bed. Eventually, I started reading the articles in the magazine, and I came across an article by Max Adler called Golf Saved My Life. And every month, Max would profile someone going through a hard time in their life. And I correlated that with my story, what I was going through. I had 20 years in prison. I walked into the office one day, and there's this random letter postmarked from Attica Correctional Facility. And it's from an inmate named Valentino Dixon, who isn't a golfer, but says he's found peace drawing golf courses, and that he'd come across my name in the back issues of Golf Digest that he'd been using for reference material. They were taken aback. The Golf Digest immediately said, we want to come visit you, we want to write this story. They asked for my trial transcripts, my paperwork, because when you say you're innocent in prison, most people are going to say, hell no, everybody says they're innocent. So I had to prove to these people that what happened to me, eight witnesses clearing me in the confession, who's going to believe that? Like, how, how did that, there's no way that that happened. But I'm so captivated by his artwork that I've got to look into it further. And after some digging and digging, I'm convinced he didn't do it. Which opened up the door for Georgetown University to get involved. The students, you know, decided they want to use my case as a class project. And they says, well, what do you think about interviewing the DA's office, the prosecutors who covered this case, who tried this case? I said, it's an excellent idea. You know, I helped formulate some of the questions because nobody knew the case better than me. You know, I stayed in the prison law library. I knew a lot about the law by then. And I was a grown man. I was not 21 years old now. I was in my 40s. After they arrested me, they stripped me, they took my clothes to test my hands and my car and to see if I had fired a weapon. And the results came back negative, that I had not fired a weapon, and they hid the results. They never turned them over. And they admitted this on camera, 
and three months later, I was released after 27 years. This right here is a, a, a big step in social change, social justice, you know, and I'm gonna thank Max. Thank you, too. You're the toughest guy I know, <laughs> toughest golfer I know. <laughs> My mother bought me a big easel, and I'm used to drawing on a small board, okay? And she bought me a big easel, and I can't wait to use it. The message in life is this. Always be grateful, never be ungrateful, because there's always someone doing worse than you are. I was in prison with 40 to life. There were people in, that doing life in prison that got the death penalty and they were innocent. So my story is this. We're all going to go through something in life we don't get to decide what it is that we go through. We're all gonna be tested with something, okay? But if you hang in there and you fight the good fight, then you're gonna be victorious in the end. My name is Valentino Dixon. I'm an artist, prison reform activist. We ain't gonna make no more excuses about anything in life. Whatever we got to do, we're gonna get to it, and we're gonna get it done by any means necessary. That's the message for the day. Watch another DP World Tour video, click here, and to subscribe, click here.